Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating an infinite sum with factorials. Factorials in the denominator. So we have 1 over 2 factorial plus 2 over 3 factorial plus 3 over 4 factorial plus 4 over 5 factorial, so on and so forth. Where the bottom number is 1 more than the top number. We could also write the general term for this, but I wanted to kind of leave it a little ambiguous. And I'm also going to show you something that is pretty interesting. Anyways, so we have this type of sum and it's an infinite sum, infinitely many terms. One of the things obviously that we need to worry about is convergence. Does this sum converge or the series converge? In other words, can we find a finite value for this sum? All right, some sums converge but they don't absolutely converge. So when you do a rearrangement, that happens usually with alternating series. For example, the alternating harmonic series, which is the 1 minus 1 half plus 1 third minus 1 fourth. I've done a video about it uh, recently. You can go out and check it out. Does converge, but if you just consider the harmonic series 1 plus 1 half plus 1 third, which is the sum of the reciprocals, it does not converge. And by using that idea, we can come up with some fun stuff. Anyways, so we have this type of sum and we're going to evaluate it and see if we can come up with a finite sum for something like this. So whenever you have a problem with factorials, you probably want to break down something. But let's go ahead and take a look at some, uh, some of the few terms of this series. By the way, when I say this, terms for the series, I'm not talking about a sequence here, I'm talking about a sum. For example, the first term for this series would be 1 over 2 factorial, the second term would be the sum of the first two terms in the sum, and then the so on and so forth. So go, go ahead and take a look. Well, for example, 2 factorial is 2, so this will become 1 half. 2 thirds, 2 over 3 factorial is 2 over 6 because 3 factorial is 6. 4 factorial is 24. And then 4 factorial, 5 factorial is 120, so that will be 4 over 120. Now if you go ahead and kind of simplify these fractions and look at the sums, this would be 1 half, this would be 1 third, this would be 1 eighth, and this would be 1 over 30. What do you find in these sums, right? So it looks like First of all, they are all unit fractions. In other words, the numerator is always 1. And second, there should be a pattern here, right? But to be able to understand what this sum is going to look like, or at least to get a better, a better idea, let's go ahead and add some of these terms. For example, the first term, the first sum, uh, is going to be 1 half, which is the first term. And then the second is going to be the sum of the first and second terms from the sum, in this case, that will be 5 over 6. And then we're going to add to this 1 over 8. And when you try to make a common denominator, let's just go ahead and add it on the side. That will be a 24, so we'll get 23 over 24. I'm sorry, that's for the actual sum, not the... We're not adding another term. This should be 23 over 24. And then let's add one more thing, 23 over 24 plus 1 over 30. Now in this case, um, we're going to find the common denominator. That would be 120, and that will be 23 times 5. That's 115 plus 4 divided by 120. So that will be 1 half plus 1 third plus 1 eighth plus 1 over 30. Notice that we're always adding unit fractions, and they're pretty small, and they're getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So the sum gets bigger, but the rate at which it's getting bigger is going to slow down. Something like that. Okay, anyways, I hope that makes sense. And one thing I want you to notice about this problem is that obviously the sum is approaching some number, which we should name at this point, right? But notice that the difference between the numerator and the denominator is always what? 1. Take a look. 1 over 2. 2 is 1 more than 1. 5 over 6, 6 is 1 more. 23 over 24, 119 over 120. Obviously, this is not a proof by any means, but when we look at the general term, this is definitely going to make more sense. But that's 
always the case, at least for the ones that we looked at. And you can keep exploring, right? So where can we go from here? By looking at the pattern, hopefully we'll get an idea. And you probably guessed what this sum is going to converge to by looking at this. Look at this. This is actually the same thing as 1 minus 1 over 120. And that's a very, very small number. And as obviously, as you add more and more terms, this is going to get smaller and smaller, which makes the sum, actually the partial sums, uh, getting closer to 1. Make sense? So intuitively, I can tell, okay, this sum is probably going to approach 1. It's good to have an idea about what that's going to look like because when you start evaluating, it should make sense, right? So how do we evaluate something like this? So let's go ahead and take a look at the technical way to solve it. 1 half or 1 over 2 factor. I think I should write it in the factorial notation because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and look at the general term and come up with a general solution. So general term is basically going to be something like n over n plus 1 factorial. If I go with n because this is the first term. So I can also write this sum using sigma like n equals 1 through infinity n over n plus 1 factorial. So in this case, this sum makes sense. And also if you're evaluating a series, there's something called the limit test, which is really nice. If you go ahead and take the general term and take the limit as n approaches infinity, if that limit does not equal 0, that means the series is going to diverge. In this case, it's 0, so our test is kind of inc inconclusive. It doesn't give us any results, but that's okay. Sometimes it does, and it's very important. The very first thing you should check with series. Anyways, so we're going to focus on the n term and... We can go ahead and actually, by the way, I forgot to put the dot, dot, dot here. This is supposed to be an infinite sum, so I think I should put the plus dot, dot, dot here. Okay, it's going to continue forever. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this term, n over n plus 1 factorial, which can be broken down into the following. Now, notice that the numerator does not seem to be divisible by denominator. Obviously, denominator is bigger, but at least we were expecting that uh, something divisible by n plus 1. So we can do that actually. We can make it happen by manipulating the n. So we can add 1 and subtract. And now this is going to give us something beautiful. That's one of the things that's in math that you tweak something a little bit and you get something awesome. And that's what happens here. This allows us to separate it into a difference of two fractions, which will give us a telescoping series. You get the idea? Okay, n plus 1 factorial can be written as n plus 1 times n factorial. Obviously, factorial can be expanded, and you can pretty much stop at any point. Now, n plus 1 cancels out, leaving us with a telescoping sum. 1 over n factorial minus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. Obviously, when you use it with the sigma notation, you can go ahead and take a look at the following. The first sum is kind of going to give us terms like 1 over 1 factorial or 1, and then 1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over 3 factorial, so on and so forth. And then the other sum is going to start at 1 over 2 factorial and give us the same sum pretty much. With, with a tiny bit of difference, it's going to miss the 1. So when you subtract these two things, only 1 is left and that should give us the result. Right? Great. So let's go ahead and take a look. As we guessed, the sum approaches 1. And the uh, infinite sum is actually 1. Not just approaching, but it is 1. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some result from Wolfram Alpha because that's something that I almost always do. Check my result against Wolfram Alpha, hoping that Wolfram Alpha is going to miss the problem and I got it right. Okay, let's see. First of all, when I put this into um, Wolfram Alpha as follows, I got the following result, which is interesting because it says diverges, but our sum doesn't diverge. Do you know why? If you kind of simplify this expression, you're going to get uh, 2n minus 22, which is minus 7 after adding the 15, divided by n minus 11. Now, if you take a look at the sum, this is actually pretty interesting because, for example, if n is equal to 1, this is going to become negative 5 over negative 10, which is 1 half. If n is equal to 2, this is going to be uh, negative 3. Uh oh, that's a partial eraser. I should probably come up with a better one, but anyways, 
so when I replace n with 2, it's going to give me negative 3 divided by negative 9, which is 1 third. And then when I replace n with 3, it gives me negative 1 over negative 8, which is 1 over 8. You get the idea? It gives me the same sum, but it's not going to go on forever. So based on the input I gave Wolfram Alpha, it interpreted this sum a little differently. Not with the factorials, but with uh, some type of rational term. But when I gave it one more term, good job Wolfram Alpha, we should give you some credit, not full credit, but maybe partial credit, it was able to figure it out. And this function is actually the gamma function, and gamma of n plus 2 is the same thing as n plus 1 factorial. So Wolfram Alpha got it right after I gave it more input. Obviously, that's what uh, large language models do. The more input you give it, the better. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.